this is Gordon Freeman, and welcome to Jackass. I've recently committed myself to a no-jump run of Half-Life 2. My name is Coderp, and welcome to episode 2 in the series. So when we last left off, we were at this dark staircase. The staircase led us down into a tunnel. After dispatching some guards, I get to this platform where I have to get on top of an incoming train and make my way to a platform across. Luckily, this part didn't require any jumping. I get to this old beaten down house where I get debated by some pickups. I can't get back up, so unfortunately I have to reload the game. When I come back, I realize I can just pick up the consumables, which gives me an idea for this video. From now on, let's keep a running list of insights that could potentially help me in this playthrough so that you can get an idea of my thought process. So insight number one of this video, consumables can be picked up with the pickup key. However, like my girlfriend, they are immaterial, meaning that they exist in spirit only and cannot be used as physical objects. Moving on, I make quick work of two guards, which leads me into my next obstacle, a broken down fence. Let's talk about the use cases of the objects I've used so far. Barrels are very difficult to get on top of without assistance from other objects, as are large crates. But if I use smaller objects in tandem with these larger objects, I can gain a lot of verticality. Wooden pallets make for very good ramps. However, they're flimsy and prone to moving around a lot if they aren't well supported. So putting boxes under the pallets or other objects make for solid ramps that are easy to get on top of. And using a barrel to brace a wooden pallet, here's what I did. After making my way past the fence, I travel along this tunnel system while getting shot at by some guards. I jump down into a sewer system and here I discover an important game mechanic. When I'm in water and I get near an object, Gordon will automatically propel himself upwards. It's not a jump, okay, this doesn't count, this is clearly game mechanics. Anyway, moving on, we get to the mother of all obstacles, this fucking cargo container. Luckily, I have access to a lot of objects from the sewers. After fumbling around a little bit, I manage to make it up the first part, but I fall into a pit on the side that I cannot get out of. So I make the connection that I need to have this pit filled before I can attempt to get on top of the container. So I reload and I bring a lot more objects from the sewers. Some boxes, crates, and two pallets. I also make sure to fill the side of the container. And I'm not gonna lie, I spent an embarrassing amount of time on this obstacle trying different configurations of objects to use. I got close a couple times, but I was finding it difficult to get across the finish line. I head back to the sewer to grab more stuff, but hold on, I broke a bunch of objects by accident. This half pallet piece of wood is grabbable, did I just incidentally find the solution to my problem? I take the half pallet back to the cargo container, just to step on it and find out that it is immaterial. The game further taunts me by despawning it. I get back up to the side of the container, and I wedge a pallet in between me and the container. What the hell is going on in this container by the way? By wiggling the pallet around, here's what I was able to do. Success! That was exactly the leverage I needed to get on top. The alien inside throws some key blasts at me and I head on my merry way. I get to a rather open area and I see some wood I can shoot down to create a bridge. In order to get on top of the bridge, I use a crate to quickly sprint on top of it. I did all this just to find out 20 seconds later that I didn't need to do that because there was an open pipe I could have went through. Have I tried using my eyes? Moving forward, I get to a platform that I need to get on top of. Luckily, some Smash players left the CRT here. Other than being great for retro games, it functions amazingly as a step sys step stool. In the next little area I find myself in, some guards drop barrels on me, and I need to wait for these barrels to explode so that I can get to the next area. There's a little jump I have to make, and while getting on top of the platform is easy, I need assistance with getting into the pipe itself. At this point in the run, I realized my OnlyFans subscriptions were about to run out, so I alt tab the game to renew them real quick. When I came back, I remembered the glorious CRT from the earlier part, so I grabbed that. Unfortunately, Nintendo delivered a lawsuit that destroyed my CRT. I reload, and I take the TV down to a little corner of the room to protect it from the lawyers. This works, and I can now use it as the platform I need. 
At this point in the game, I wanted to do some experimenting. Maybe I would run into new insights. Here's what I found out. I tested to see if an explosive barrel can propel an object away, and it turns out it can. Pretty far in some cases, too. Then I tested an object between me and an explosive barrel. This kind of worked, but I needed my HP to be above a certain threshold. I really hope I get to use this tech at some point. As you saw at the beginning of the video, I can use an object such as this trash can to fly pretty damn far. Let's add it to the list of insights. Moving on with the run, I get to some platforms with gaps between them. Just sprinting over this gap didn't work. However, when I sprint over it and crouch in midair, I can clear the gap pretty easily. While I never really played Half-Life 2 before, I did play some Counter-Strike Source back in the day, so I remember a few peculiarities with the engine, one of them being the crouch jump. Anyway, new insight gained. Or old insight, I guess? Once inside the building, I happen across a seesaw. And how I solved this I think was not dissimilar to how you would solve this normally. I simply put cinder blocks on one side, and once it was stable enough, I ran across the gap, making sure to crouch in midair. I kill a guard and I gain access to a new weapon type, an SMG. I keep playing till I get to a pipe I have to traverse. I panic due to an enemy and jump off the pipe. But not to worry, I use some barrels to get back up. Eventually, I get to this vent in the wall that leads to an open sewer type area, aka my room. There's a small little puzzle here where I have to turn a valve in order to raise the water level. Then I have to shoot some boards in order to release these wooden spools that are going to get me to the other side. The problem here is that even when I'm on top of the spools, I can't get enough leverage to get on the platform above. So I go get a barrel, and with some trial and error, I finally managed to make it up. And with that done, that's going to wrap up episode two. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in episode three.